I am joined by actor and model Alec Musser. What's up, man? How's life? What's happening, Matt? It's good to see you. Good to see you as well. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you for the time. So there's something that's actually been bothering me all day. I need an answer to, uh, to, answer to this question. Why have you not been on American Ninja Warrior, Titan Games <laughs> with The Rock yet? I feel like you are like the dream person for those shows. Why have you not been on it yet? Yeah, you know, actually, um, I just saw the one, uh, the tag one that's hosted by J.J. Watt. And I was like, that looks like so much fun, man. I just, you know, that's like every kid's like tag dream. It'd be super fun. So, yeah, good question, man. Maybe, uh, you know, somebody from the networks will see this and, and uh, want to get me in on one of those things. 100%. Now, if you win on American Ninja Warrior, I want about like half of that, uh, whatever money you make from that show, because I feel like I planted the seed. And, uh, so, and obviously with, with Titan, if you're going to meet The Rock, you, you, you need to get me an interview with him. I would love to speak with him. <laughs> Absolutely, man. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> well, you sent me a, a link this morning to a really cool show that I'm just hearing about. You're the host of Weekend Warrior. I want you to talk about that. It seems really, really cool. Yeah. So, you know, my main focus for the last few years has been this project that, that I'm developing with a, with a producing partner. Um, it is called Weekend Warrior. There's a, there's a link to it on my website if you guys want to check it out. Um, it is, uh, it's a travel sports recreation, outdoor adventure series. And, um, yeah, it's just sort of, it just sort of grew from all of the things that I'm passionate about. And, you know, a few years ago, I just made the decision that this is something I had to take a leap for and, and, uh, give it a, give it a go. And it's obviously, you know, there's there's been a lot of shows like this. It's not, uh, you know, it's not a brand new concept, but, you know, there's a market for it. And um, we think we've got something pretty exciting and captivating. So right now we're just in the process of, of uh, trying to land a home for it. Yeah, I am super, uh, super excited to hear more about that. I did watch that video that you sent me. And I was about to say, because doing a lot of research on you, I saw that it didn't blend a lot of the things that you're passionate about. It really seems like you're living the dream with this, uh, with this show, I mean, it really seems like it's right up your alley. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the idea, and and I think, um, you know, like I said, with with uh, you know the X Games and shows like Anthony Bourdain's, you know, it's it's there's obviously uh, you know an interest in in programming that's not competitions like the Ninja Warrior. Um, you know, it's not a it's not it, it will have cuisine in it but it's not a you know a man versus food it's not this crazy um outside of the box uh you know series but it's uh i think there's i think there's definitely a market for it and and people you know like that kind of stuff so you know we're hoping to bring it to the uh to the american public 100 percent. well pre-modeling and acting post-college you worked as ski patrol at mammoth mountain i'm super curious what did that job entail uh, you know, ski patrol for people that don't spend a lot of time in, uh, in the mountains and skiing, um, your, your job is basically your, your, um, an on mountain medic basically. Um, so you're a first responder. Uh, the other, you know, big, uh, responsibility is to control the mountain for avalanches. So to mitigate, um, the avalanche danger for the, for the skiing public. And, uh, and the, the, the less glamorous side of it is you are the uh, on-mountain grunt. So you're, you're responsible for basically putting up all the, um, you know, the safety uh, signage and, and, you know, fencing and, you know. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a demanding, it's a demanding uh, 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 job, but super fun. I had a great time doing it. I was about to say, because on your Wikipedia, it said that it was one of the jobs that you enjoyed most throughout your career. And I'm like, that seems like a very stressful job, but I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it just, it's, uh, I mean, if you, you, you got to love them, you got to love the mountains and you got to love snow and uh, Mammoth Mountain is, uh, is no joke, man. I mean, it's a, it's a serious ski resort. So, um, you know, there's a lot of work there, but uh, yeah, I had, I had a great time. Yeah. Well, after that modeling began, I really want to hear about this journey into modeling because they're two obviously very different fields. So how did modeling start? 
you know, modeling started for me in the off season, right? I mean, I was working on the ski patrol during, uh, during the winters, but uh, down in Southern California in the, in the summertime, spring and summertime. And um, yeah, I was uh, kicking around the beaches and, you know, somebody came up to me one day as I was, you know, thinking I was pretty cool strutting around my shirt off or whatever I was doing and, uh, and asked me if I wanted to come in and, you know, meet with their agents and so forth. And, um, this was, uh, this was, you know, I'm, I'm dating myself, but this was back when Abercrombie and Fitch was like, cool. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and so, um, you know, they sent some photos to New York and, uh, you know, the next thing I know I was in Miami and, and, uh, you know, shooting with, uh, you know, a bunch of studs and a bunch of beautiful women. And, and, uh, I was like, damn, this is pretty cool. I'll hang out here and do this. So yeah, that's kind of how it all got kicked off. Dude, I wish I could be walking on the beach with my shirt off and someone would come up to me and be like, I want you to model. Like, but I, I, I've never gotten that. I, I, I think I'm quite beautiful. I got the, the Zoolander yeah. uh, blue steel down, but I, I've Absolutely, never got any. Man. You're, you're, you know, dude, don't sell yourself short, bro. There's a market out there for you for sure. Why, thank you. You know what? Hey, so I really, during this quarantine, I, I'm not, well, first, I'm not an athlete besides playing chess. That's like the hardest sport, but, uh, <laughs> but I don't work out very often. If I, I want you to, uh, to hear me out here. I just got out of college. I don't have much money at all. But if I ever need a personal trainer out of anyone in the world, you got The Rock, Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime, I would want you to be my personal trainer. Dude, we can get that APAC going for me. Absolutely, man. Yeah, dude. This, I mean, it's under there, Matt. That's what you got to understand. It's there. We just got to get rid of the stuff that's on top of it. We can do it. It's not, not, no problem. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> So was modeling ever something you had considered? Like, like, for example, if that guy hadn't walked up to you, would you have ever pursued modeling? I, you know, I don't know. I, it really, you know, I was, again, I was so focused on just trying to chase surf and chase snow and chase girls that, like, it really wasn't something that I was, you know, I was, uh, I was really thinking about. But, um, you know, in Southern California, the industry is kind of all around you, whether it's entertainment or fashion or fitness or whatever. And so it's always there. Um, but it wasn't like anything that I was like, Oh, I, you know, I want to go out and, you know, become a model. It was just sort of like, you know, it kind of happened organically and, um, you know, the rest is history, I guess. Yeah. Well, again, being that I'm, uh, pretty far from a model. Uh, I'm super curious about what it's like being on like set of a photo shoot. Like you, you've modeled for GQ, Cosmopolitan, as you said, Abercrombie and Fitch, those are huge, like absolutely enormous. What is it like uh, being on set for, for, for that? Like what, what does a day look like for you? It's, you know, that's the glamorous side for sure. Um, you, you know, you, you kind of feel like you're a bit of a rock star and, and, um, you know, you got craft services and you got people doing your hair and your makeup and, and so forth. But, you know, behind the scenes, you know, there's a lot of bullshit, you know, and you're driving around to castings and, and you're, um, you know, you're changing clothes in your car because you're going from a, a swimsuit audition to a, you know, you're, you're, you're in your business suit for some commercial for something, you know, and um, yeah, so I mean, there is the glamorous side, but there's also the, you know, the nonsense side, just like every other job in the world, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously it's not too drastic to go from modeling to acting. I would think that there are quite a few commonalities between the two fields, but how did acting begin? So acting began for me, um, through commercials really. So you start, you know, with the print stuff and then you get a commercial agent and, then you're going in for, you know, Ford commercials and Gatorade commercials and, you know, Crest toothpaste commercials and so on and so forth. And so you get, you know, I got a little taste of it through that kind of stuff. And, um, and then I wound up doing a, um, a, uh, a reality series called uh, I Want to Be a Soup, uh, Soap Star. And um, I won. And from that, I got a... Uh, I got a 15 week contract on all my children um, in New York and they extended it for two and a half years. And so, yeah, I mean, that's how it all, all got kicked off. And uh, yeah, it was the best way to, to 
learn how to act, you know, with a bunch of veterans who are really good and really talented, um, working every day and, and, uh, you know, getting to develop a character over a couple of years. It was, it was really cool. Very cool. Very cool. Well, you were a prominent figure in one of the, in my opinion, best movie scenes in cinematic history. I, I, I feel like you're probably going to know what I'm about to do here. Yeah. But hello, yeah. Latiz. That is, I'm telling you right now, that is like the best scene I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> For anyone who doesn't know the reference, it's Grown Ups. And I really, first, it's my birthday in two days. So I would like for you to like say, hello, Matthew, but you don't have to. You don't have to. <laughs> maybe at the end, maybe at the end. I got to put the, I got to put the outfit on, you know, it, it uh, you know, it, it, it constricts everything in such a way that it brings the, the octave of my voice up a little bit, but uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, well, first I want to know how that opportunity to be on Grown Ups uh, came together. And I really want to hear about the audition for that, for that part. So the audition was just like every other audition. I mean, it was, uh, it was, and in fact, um, at the time the project was being called the lake house, which, you know, there obviously was a lake house in the movie. Um, and I had no idea. I went into it just like every other audition, just kind of like, okay, you know, go to, you know, wherever it was, it was at, uh, it was, I, you know, I can't remember. It was in, Studio City somewhere and uh, the casting office and um, and so you know in out you know five minutes whatever but it was um, it wasn't the exact line but it was similar to that line and they wanted this high pitched Canadian accent um, and I would do it and the and I felt like it was going well because the casting director was like that's really good. And he was laughing and, uh, and I'm like, okay, that's a good sign. He's like, but I need it more ridiculous. And I'm like, okay. And here I am, you know, it, it called for me to come in in a speedo. So I'm in this speedo and, you know, I, I grew up playing hockey. And so I grew up, you know, around a bunch of Canadian kids. Um, and, uh, so I had the, I had the, you know, this French Canadian accent down a little bit, you know, I'd heard enough of this, um, you know, ridiculous. Oh yeah, Canadian, you know, and and uh, so yeah, it uh, you know came off pretty well, and and actually um, I got the uh, I got a call um, while I was on a boat um, surfing um, out in the Channel Islands off the coast of California, um, and there's no cell reception there, and I was out there for like four or five days with some friends, and. Um, I came back and there were like 25 voicemails from my agent and the casting office. And they're like, you know, it just, the, the level of urgency from my cat or from my agent just kept getting more and more intense. Alec, where the fuck are you? Dude, you booked this job. You have to leave for Boston, you know, in like 10 days, to, you know, and I'm just like, I, you know, I get this, I'm just like, oh my God, man, you know, and it, it's a dream come true, right? I mean, work with Adam Sandler. And I'm like, I think about how close I was to missing that opportunity. It's like, for, you know, for surfing out the, you know, surfing out the Channel Islands. But Nobody would have played that part better than you, and I'm very confident in saying that. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Yeah. Now, how long did it take to record that, that scene? Um, you know, that scene... The whole, because there's so much going on, right? So they're shooting my scene, they're shooting, you know, the, the, the shot for the women. Um, and so I was there for about two and a half weeks um, because they were shooting stuff in and around that pool setting. So we actually shot a bunch of other stuff that didn't make it into the movie. Um, so that was the, you know, that was the main scene, but, um, you know, I ended up being fortunate enough that they kept me around for another couple of weeks to shoot some other stuff that, like I said, never made it in, but, you know, I got to work with, with Sandler and, and, um, you know, the rest of the crew. Um, and it was, it was just awesome just to watch the way they work and how creative they were and, and, uh, how much, you know, ad-living they're doing and and you know 
that's just how the, the guys Sandler's just such a genius you know he just that's how he works and that's why he kept me around because he was like oh this would be great bring the Canadian guy in they, they started calling me Saskatchewan <laughs> bring Saskatchewan in you know we'll put him in here and um the scene at the end where they have um Steve Buscemi crashing through um upside down um you know on the on the trapeze they shot that with me also and um you know a different sort of scenario but um you know to to work with these stunt guys that just you know knock it out of the park and you know do this stunt that involved this 200 foot trapeze and i go crashing through the barn and i mean it's just it was awesome. Really cool. Oh my goodness. I can't even imagine like that. That must just being in that environment around all those comedians. I mean, they're all legends. It must've just been such like a funny, like any stress or anxiety, any actor may have had on set. I feel like all of that would have been diminished just from being around them. I mean, would I be right in assuming that? Yeah. Yeah. No, yes and no, because you know, you don't want to blow it. Right. These guys are such pros and um, you know, they, they are just, like you said, they're legends. And so you want to, you know, you want to do a good job. So it's like, um, I, I think if anything, that it adds a little bit of the stress, but you know, to his credit, you know, Adam Sandler, Dennis Dugan, the, the director, I mean, they're, they're all so cool also. So in addition to being super talented, um, just super cool to work with. And so, you know, the, the, the scene that I shot where I'm walking across the pool, you know, that was in front of 500 people, you know, all these extras in the pool. And, you know, no matter what, it's still nerve wracking, you know, and in, and in front of um, Selma Hayek, you know, and it's just like, oh, my God, man, you know, so it's, uh, it's it, it, you know, it was nerve wracking, but at the same time, it was so much fun. And, and uh, it was such a lighthearted, cool environment. So, yeah, it, it, was, it was really rad. I watch that movie literally all the time because it, it genuinely just makes me happy and it makes me laugh like crazy. Um, what I really, really like is how on your Instagram account, people still comment, like, like people still come like, hello, ladies, like, like people actually <laughs> still comment. I yeah. feel like there should be like a spinoff with just your character, like either a TV show or a movie. Like that would be yeah. amazing, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it would, you know, it would be uh, it would be fun. I actually bumped into Adam Sandler um, after uh, they had started working on Grown Ups Two, and I said, "Bro, like, what you know? What happened? How come I how come I didn't get uh, get the invite to Grown Ups Two? And he's like, "Dude, I just couldn't have you around my wife anymore." Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So I mean, he's he's you know obviously joking, but uh, yeah, such he's he's you know he lives up to his reputation because he's got a reputation for just being a super down to earth cool guy and he's every bit of that you know yeah. really, really. And i think what's really cool and, and you know obviously what's really cool is you know being on snl back in the day being in all these these amazing comedic movies and tv shows it also shows well roundedness when he's in more serious movies like i forgot the name of it but he was just in a movie uh with kevin garnett and it was a very serious type of movie so it just yeah. shows the talent there you know yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's uber talented, and and the work ethic um, is is you know un, unrivaled, really. I mean, it, you know, his body of work is a testimony to that. But you know, to to watch him in person, this guy that you know he could sit on his hands and you know be pointing at people to go and you know do this and that, but he's he's hands on deck, man. I mean, he's there first shot of the day to the last shot of the day. And he's got, you know, Dennis directing, but he's over his shoulder the whole time watching and, you know, doing his own directing. I mean, the guy's, the guy's an animal and he's, and, you know, he deserves every bit of success that he's, uh, that he's gotten. That's really good to hear. That's really good to hear. Well, obviously, as we talked about before, Weekend Warrior, I'm sure that's one of your primary goals. Uh, but tell me the primary goals for the rest of 2020 and looking at even 2021. Yeah, man. I mean, it's tough. It's a really, you know, we're, we're in a tough landscape right now. I mean, obviously, you know, that, you know, right, right now, as we're talking, you know, you could, you could shoot a gun down Santa Monica Boulevard, not hurt, hit a person, you know, I mean, there's, it, they've got a one o'clock curfew and, you know, everything is on standby um, back there. And so it's a, it's a tough environment to be, 
thinking about really anything career-wise. Um, you know, that being said, obviously, uh, you know, Weekend Warrior is, is my main focus. You know, we'd love to uh, find a home for that in the next, you know, 6, 12, 18 months. Um, so I'd say that's the, that's the primary goal, really, from, from a career standpoint. Perfect. Yeah, once again, I absolutely cannot wait for that. Uh, I'm going to leave the floor to you. First, I'm looking forward to talking again once we find a home for that show. Uh, how can people find you on social media, which I'm also going to put down below, and anyone you'd like to thank? You know, Matt, honestly, the, the people that I think I'd like to thank the most are the people on the front line, right? I mean, they're the ones that are doing the jobs that we don't want to be doing. And uh, they're the real heroes right now. So thank you to, uh, to all of you guys. And um, yeah, I'm on Instagram, Alec Musser. And uh, yeah, I appreciate the interest, Matt. Thanks for the chat.